When you think about Britain, what do you visualise? Is it the black taxes? Is it the red telephone boxes? The the red post boxes? Changing of the guard? Buckingham Palace? Big Ben? What is it? I bet you it's not one of these 10 traditions that come from Britain. I guarantee you that you haven't heard of them because they're so weird and very, very strange. Here are 10 weird British traditions. In at number 10, we've got Gurning. The Egremont Crab Fair, one of England's weirdest events, gets its name from crab apples. It started a very long time ago, back in the 13th century, when the then Lord of the Manor used to give away crab apples to the population. In fact, to this day, they have the parade of the apple cart where apples are thrown into the crowds on the main street. It's part of the fair. There also are a load of other traditional events, including greasy pole climbing, pipe smoking contents, Cumberland wrestling, and hounds, hounds trowel. But, the reason why it makes news every single year is the Gurning Competition, home to the World Gurning Championship. Basically, Gurning involves a skill where you kind of have to turn your face into rubber, which is bizarre and unique not just to England, but to this particular part of England. What contestants do is put their heads through a horse collar and then they have to create the ugliest, most grustique face that they can manage. A certain amount of skill is in fact involved, but so is a lot of beer, and toothlessness has a really good impact as well. Occasionally, celebrities visiting the area have uh, had an attempt to become a winning gurner. So if you're ever in Cumbria, and you're ever in the Lake District, in September, stop in at the Egremont Crab Fair. I guarantee you that you won't see anything else like it, and you certainly will not forget it. In at number nine, we've got cheese rolling down at Cooper's Hill. The Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake is an annual event that's held on Springbank Holiday near Gloucester in the Cotswolds region. And it's traditionally by and for the people of Brockworth, which is the local village. But now, people from all over the world have come to take part. It, it gets its name from the hill on which the cheese rolling occurs. Due to the steepness and uneven surface of the hill, there are usually a number of injuries, and they range from sprained ankles, broken bones, and concussion. Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling has been summarised thus. 20 young men chase a cheese off a cliff and tumble 200 yards to the bottom, where they're scraped up by paramedics and packed off to the hospital. In at number eight, we've got maypole dancing. And this is a form of folk dance distinctive to Western Europe, with England, Sweden, Galicia, Portugal and Germany making up the bulk of the traditions. In the most widespread and common form, the dancers perform circle dances around a tall pole, which is decorated with painted stripes, flags, flowers and garlands, as well as other emblems. In the other form, dancers dance in a circle, each holding a coloured ribbon attached to a much smaller pole. The ribbons are then interined and plated onto the pole itself or into a web around the pole. The dancers may then retrace their steps exactly so that they can unravel their ribbons. At number seven, we have the Pearly King and Queen. Now, known as Pearlies, they're an organised charitable tradition of working class culture specific to London. Uh, the practice of wearing clothes decorated with these pearl buttons originated in the 19th century. Pearlies were first associated with Henry Croft, who was an orphan uh, street sweeper who used to collect money for charity. In 1911, the organised Pearly Society was formed in Finchley, North London, and now most areas, if not all areas of London, have their own Pearly Kings and Queens. Number six, we've got Guy Fawkes Night, Bonfire Night, held on 5th of November in the UK and some other parts of the Commonwealth, where people burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes, often accompanied by a fireworks display. The word Guy, meaning man or person, is derived from his name, Guy Fawkes. Also known as Guido, the name he adopted while fighting for the Spanish in the Low Countries. He was part of a group of Catholic restorationists who plan, helped plan the gunplay plot of 1605. The aim was to displace Protestant rule by blowing up the House of Parliament when King James I and the entire Protestant and even a lot of the Catholic aristocracy and nobility were inside. The conspirators saw this as a reaction to the discrimination as they saw it against English Catholics. The gunpowder plot was led by Robert Catesby, who I've got a video about uh, on my site, which was put up just a few days ago. Now, 
However, although it was planned by Catesby, Fawkes was put in charge of the execution. He was the one that was arrested just a few hours before the explosion when they were searching the cellars underneath Parliament in the early hours because they had received an anonymous warning letter. And so what Bonfire Night is, is a celebration of the failed attempt to blow up the Houses of Parliament. In at number five, we've got Ascot Ladies' Day. Ascot is a famous English racecourse located, unsurprisingly, in the town of Ascot, which is in Berkshire. It's one of the leading racecourses in the UK, and of the 32 annual Group 1 races, it hosts nine of them, which is the same as Newmarket. This course is really closely associated with the British royal family because it's only six miles from Windsor and is also owned by the Crown Estate. The stage is 25 days of racing during the year, which comprise 16 flat meetings, which are held May to October. The Royal Meeting in June is a really big draw, with the highlight being the Ascot Gold Cup. However, the most prestigious race is the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes, which happen in July. What is so special about this uh, event is that every year the fashion, specifically the hats, get bigger, bolder and weirder. Number four, we have... Bog snorkeling. Yeah, you heard that totally correctly. I did say bog, followed by the word snorkeling. And if you ever doubted that any of us Brits are somewhat eccentric, then this should really <laughs> help you make up your mind. What you do, okay, you put some goggles on, a pair of flippers, you get a snorkel, and then you dive into a bog and you race along a 120 foot trench that's filled with mud. It's held every year, and although I say our spirits are eccentric, I must say that participants do come from all over the world, and loads and loads of money is raised for charity, so it's not all bad. As we get closer to the top of the list, things get weirder and weirder. And so we're now going to talk about straw bear, which is a very old tradition. It's held on the 7th of January in a very small area of the Finland, which is borders of Huntingdonshire and Cambridgeshire including Ramsey Merseyside. It's a very flat area of the UK. And it's believed that it was the traditional start of the agricultural year in England. A man or a boy wears a straw costume covering him from head to toe. And he goes from house to house where he dances. As a prize for his dancing, people give him money, food or beer. Really close to the top of the charts now. So obviously... We're going to get something really strange at number two, which we have with Worm Charming. Yep, us Brits, we indulge from time to time in a bit of Worm Charming. It's a way to attract the earthworms from the ground. Many do it to collect bait for fishing, but there are also those who do it as a sport. And the village of Wollaston in Antwich is the place where, since 1980... The annual World Championships have been organised. It was initiated by a local man called Tom Shuttlebotham. And on the 5th of July, he actually charmed 511 worms from the ground in only half an hour. There are 18 walls and there's just a couple of them. Each competitor has got to have a 3 times 3 metre area. Music of any kind can be used to churn the worms out of the ground. No drugs. You can't drug the worms. No, no tripping worms. And uh, what a amazingly, is a stimulant to the worm, so that's a drug and you can't use it. Here it is, people. Number one, it's Morris dancing. A Morris dancing is an English folk dance that is usually accompanied by music. It's based on stepping and choreography by a group of dancers. They use implements such as sticks, swords, handkerchiefs, and in a small number of dances, for one or two men, steps are performed near and across a pair of clay tobacco types laid across each other on the floor. The earliest known and surviving English Witten mention of Morris dancing dates to 1448 and uh, records the payment of seven shillings to Morris dancers by the Goldsmiths Company in London. Further mentions of Morris dancing occur in the late 15th century and also early records such as visiting bishops' visitation articles mentioning sword dancing, guising and other dancing activities as well as the mumming plays. While the earliest records invariably mention Morris as M-O-R-Y-S in a court setting and a little later in the Lord Mayor's percussions in Parliament, it had adopted the nature of a folk dance performed in the parishes by the mid-17th century. Outside of England, there are 150 Morris teams in the United States. Also, British expatriates form larger parts of Morris dancing traditions in Australia, Canada, New Zealand and Hong Kong. There are also isolated, probably very isolated, groups in other countries. 
So that concludes our journey through 10 of the oddest and strangest English-British traditions. Hope you've enjoyed it. Next time you think of the UK, don't think of Brexit, don't think of Parliament, don't think of Big Ben. Think of worm charming. Think of bog snorkelling. And then you've got us eccentric Brits down to a tea and not a cup of tea. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment. Catch you later. Bye.